Why don't you like Why don't you like my, um, headphones? I don't like hearing my voice. Oh, so when you hear when you, do you watch movies of yourself and stuff? The what? Do you, do you, I mean, you saw Guest House, right? Well, yeah, I fucking did. Yeah, but my point. I know, <laughs> but I know, but what I'm saying <laughs> is, is that you're fucking rolling, dude. We are rolling. Well, then good. All right, but aren't you supposed to introduce me? I am. We haven't really even started. Let me just do it. Okay. I mean, why are you so angry? You seem angry. What? Do you seem angry? Are you angry? No, I just don't know what's going on. In this house? No, I know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Gil. Five, four, three. We don't need eight. another hero. That song is. You don't a need another Chiro. What's Chiro mean? It's the fucking cinnamon fucking. The thing that Mexicans love to eat for dessert. Yes. Yeah, churros are delicious. The, the best. Yeah, yeah. You can only have like a half a one, though. I know. I've, I've had a full one before, but make your tummy hurt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They love cinnamon. Horchata, too. I love horchata. Mm -hmm. It's like liquid form uh, churro. Churro, yeah. Right? Anyway, welcome to another. <laughs> welcome to another. Your energy right now, dude. Your energy right now is negative. -o. You don't know why. Well, I uh, will get to that now. Okay. But I'm having a bad day as well. Okay. So, you know, let's start it has with nothing to do. My day's been good. I understand. Good. It's just I knew I was coming to see you. Right. And so, um, I've had a really fucked up day. So I, I wish that your energy and your and your attitude was a little bit more positive. Well, it's it, you came it, in real angry. Yeah, well, it's hard to have a positive energy when you're on the documentary talking about my mom's vagina. Yeah, mm. let's just get that out of the way. Wait, I yeah, you said something about like used to massage my mom, and then you said something about her vagina. Yeah, I never said anything yeah, about your you mom's did, vagina. Well, you haven't seen the documentary. I've never seen the documentary. Yeah, well, you should watch what you said in it. What? <laughs> It's pretty bad, dude. Okay, what did I say about your mom's vagina? You I love said your mom. Something about she's a great vagina. Smelling her vagina in the air at, in the back of the main room. Yeah, but that's that. But no, that, no, no, no. That was pretty fucking gnarly, dude. No one talks about. You know what I mean? Mm -mm, mom Even the African American comedians don't talk about my mom's Whoa. vagina. Mm -mm. You're like talking about my mom, Mitzi Shore, the legend comedian comedy yeah. store yeah. you're like oh everyone had sex with her and her vagina's in the air here at the comedy store and <laughs> used to massage her and have sex with her and stuff. i never I, I never <laughs> said okay. that yeah i didn't say you had sex uh, yeah 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 you just, just did say that but i uh, for the record for the record dude do you ever been to russia are you poisoning me like russia like that guy <laughs> no, 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 no. he recovered he for recovered. the rec i recovered for the record okay and for, for the, the record, re this isn't a deposition. I, I know, I know, but for the record, I want to in your fucking dumb garage. Wow. Okay. It does. That's, I didn't know it was a garage. Those people watching. Yeah. It's in a fucking garage. <laughs> <laughs> this our, isn't like this yeah, yeah, is ghetto around here. It's a studio. Here. Yeah, yeah, it's a studio. Yeah, it's no, a studio. it's not. It's a fucking garage, dude. There might be a fucking car that comes through the side. Okay. All right. <laughs> right so, there. Our, all right. Now, I want to. Uh, I don't remember saying that. It is something that I would say. So let's just get that. That's a factual thing. Number two. Did they error that part? Yeah. You would think that they would cut it out, and I'm going to have a discussion with Mike Binder. Mm. You would think that they would cut it out, and I and and thirdly, you said something about fucking her pussy or something. No, I never <laughs> said that. Okay. Well, you haven't seen the documentary. Why would I say that I had sex it with your mom? It was you. It wasn't fucking the other Chinese comedian guy, <laughs> Asian who, who, comedian, who Peter Chen. Yeah, it wasn't him. Was he in the documentary? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's the best. Yeah, I know. What the fuck happened to him? I don't know. He oh had the best. God. He had the best. The uh, best. You know what his best? You know how uh, <laughs> when somebody would heckle, uh -huh. you have like a re retort, a comic. Yeah. His so retorts never made any dude. sense. Where were they? One time when he, he like some guy heckled him, he goes, "You shut up, or I'm going to put you on a rocket ship and fly you oh, to the, the moon." moon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> um, I want to apologize for that, and um, I will watch the documentary. And I feel really bad about it. I can't believe I said something like that about your mom. I love your mom. She saved my life. 
She changed. Why my are life. you looking in the camera? You have cross side. Your eyes are crossed. <laughs> I know. So you know what I mean, people don't know where to. Can look. I tell you what happened to me today, so that maybe you can have, be a little nicer than me? Well, okay, wait, but you apologize with the mom. The thing. mom I thing. The mom thing is like a serial offense because he shot this thing for JFL in um, in Toronto, uh-huh. and he did the same thing, but it was about my mom. Wow. And I flipped the yeah, fuck it's not out. cool, dude. You can't. I mean, talk about girls' vaginas, but not fucking someone's mom's vagina. <laughs> It's like, you know what I mean? You remember And that? then you talked about I do remember. I apologize. I, I, I want to put... Uh, we're, we're rolling, right? Yeah. yeah. We're rolling. So <laughs> Mom's I, I, vaginas are off the I, table. Right. I'm going to apologize to anybody out there if I made fun of your mother's vagina. I do it to Santino a lot, too. Right. Yeah, you or, do. His mom? His mom's vagina, yeah. Wow. But he goes after and, your and mom, she's, too. Yeah, she goes after my mom, too. And it's bullying. It's not a good thing. Yeah. It's... <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. It's terrible. It's terrible. I apologize. Where are you going? I'm just taking. Okay. Okay. So, um, I apo- I sincerely apologize for making fun of your mom's vagina. Yeah, I was I've never seen it. I was it a nice. in shock. You were in shock, really? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, man. I, why would Binder keep that in? I said a lot of things. He interviewed me a thousand times, mm. and he would p- keep that in. That's the only thing he kept in. Yeah, <laughs> that sucks. Anyway, I apologize. I love you. It's okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Nice to talk to you through fucking plexiglass. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you have cancer and you're the other room. <laughs> like I'm the bubble. Do they point. know that? Does the yeah. audience know there's a plexiglass? Yeah, 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 they do. Okay. They do. Hatu. 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 Yeah, yeah. So um you moved to Vegas. I did. Yeah, and you moved your uh you you create you know what? I'll be honest with you. In my head, I'm like, when Paul uh, Paul's moving to Vegas, and because I love your show, I've done your show before, right? And I thought he's never going to be able to find a group of people mm. like he did in L.A. Mm. But I feel like you did. Mm. I don't know how do you find these people. You put an ad in, ad in Craigslist. You, is social media? How do you do it? I just start making calls. You know what I mean? I just start making calls. I asked George to come. He said, "No, I'm not coming." <laughs> George, 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 did he really ask you? <laughs> you denied the fucking master here. He what had to fuck? stay here. He didn't want to move to Vegas. All what the right. fuck is this thing? This is weird. This stand. What the fuck is this? this is <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I just put, you know, it's like anything. Like when I started producing stuff when I was younger, I did, you know, the first thing was Polly Shore's Dead. Yeah. And that was, you know, the movie I was cut I, out of you the mo- featured in. Cut out of the movie. And, uh, uh, <laughs> And you just, you know, you put it out there. Yeah, you know, yeah. This is what I'm looking for, and I just put it out there. There's a lot of young comedians mm. in Vegas. There's a whole scene out there. There's 50 rooms out there. You got the cellar. You got the Laugh Factory. You got, uh, uh, you know, um, you know, Jimmy Kimmel's room. There's so many rooms. Mm. So guess what? There's so many young comics. Right. So there's a guy named Ian who runs one of the bar, uh, uh, open mics, and I hooked up through him through Sabrina. Sabrina uh, used to be uh, one of Sam Kennett's, was Malika's sister. Ah. Uh, you know, so Sabrina lives out there. So I love Sabrina. She gave me, um, Sabrina gave me Sam Kennison's, uh, one of his touring shirts that he wore. Oh, wow. It's in my room right now. Oh, he, sick. She came up to me at the store once, many, many years ago, and she said, Sam, I never washed it. Because I never washed his shirt. Sam wore it on stage. Mm. And I want to give it to you. Mm. And I still have it. Yeah, I love so she's she's out there and then you know you just start calling and then you you know I did an audition for my podcast uh, so the first month it was I was like an American Idol for, <laughs> random, for random rant so the whole yeah, yeah. the whole every episode was me auditioning people oh uh, yeah 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 so yeah. I came across this Asian kid named Mike Tran I call him Bok Choi yeah and he's like <laughs> He's like, uh, you know, he lives with his he lives with his parents. Yeah, yeah. He's half Chinese, half Vietnamese. Yeah, and uh, he speaks full on Vietnamese. And he, you know, he's also a sushi chef. Right. But he's also a comic. So I brought him in, and and you know, he became like the sidekick. Plus, I got this uh, other kid, James. Yeah. Who's got? Can we go back to Mike Tran though, real quick. Okay. Um, because you know, I've gone through the Poly Short boot camp. Mm-hmm. Um, I opened for you many times, toured with you. And I know that there's a lot of pinching going on. Do you, yes. do you pinch him? Physical pinch? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, but it's just. No, no, like, no, 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 I'm not saying the sexual way. I'm just saying. Like this? Yeah, yeah. He likes to pinch I do your this arms. With his eyes. Let me show you what I do. You, you can't. I can. No, no, no. No, no, no. You, you, you can't. No, no. You got to go back. You got to go back, Paul. I just got Paul, I, I, it's okay, Paul. You got to go back. You got to go back. Paul, you gotta, Paul, please go back. Please go back. 
Hit short. <laughs> oh. <laughs> His eyes a lot. You know, see how your eyes. What do I do with your eyes when I see your eyes? Yeah, you'll like. Yeah. Um, I go like this. No, I go. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Why do you do that to Asians? That's because my mom d used to do that, so I do it too. Oh yeah, yeah, Heredit yeah hereditary. So. Yeah. What? Hereditary? Yeah, it's hereditary. <laughs> but hold on. Strictly to Asians? The what? Only to Asians? Well, yeah, because his eyes are like little al almonds. <laughs> <laughs> He's got little almond yeah. eyes. I do a little almond. Uh, yeah, so, I do remember you doing that. Yeah, so so Mike, you know, is a kid that is just adorable. He's a sweetheart, and we just hit it off. And he also works for me. Yeah. So, like, we'll go out and go grocery shopping. So he'll put my clothes away. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, but, uh, but, you know, and he helps me produce my show and, and get. But the hazing love. and stuff, does he like it? Yeah, he's cool. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. he knows it's love. It's love. Yeah, it yeah, is yeah, love. yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um, he's a sweetheart, and I got a great crew over there. So I'm just, you know, so I got a DJ, Kira. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, I got rant girls, you know, girls that walk around with the cards. And my house <laughs> is fucking awesome. Yeah, I like that. I mean, house. It's a night. It's 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 from 1957. Wow. It's a very old house. But when you walk in, it was interesting because, you know, one of the reasons why I moved there is because, you know, my parents are gone. You know what I mean? And it was like I wanted to start this new life. I wanted to kind of go back to how I was years ago, which was happy me. I wanted to get past all the kind of sadness from my parents and all that stuff. And I wanted to start a new kind of a new life out there. And, um, and uh, I walked into the house when I got it, you know, before I signed the paper, and I'm, my parents, I felt my parents were there, and I honestly felt like you, they said to me, you're home now. You can relax. Mm -hmm. You know, that's kind of how I felt. So it's just a, when you walk in the house, you'll feel my mom in there, and you'll feel my parents in there. And the, 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 the neighborhood that I, I went into is this Rancho Circle, and it's all old gangster houses. So it's a so, so like Billy Gibbons lives there from ZZ Top. Oh wow, the guy with the beard. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And then across the street from me, I swear to God, is Dean Martin's old house. Oh wow. So it's like all so you drive into the area and it feels like you're um like in a Scorsese movie. Oh. So it's old Vegas. It's towards downtown. So it's literally five minutes from Fremont Street. Mm. Oh wow. So it's dope and it's it's big. And Fremont's and like so an, different now too. It's Fremont's different. Is free, downtown Las it's Vegas dope. is more fun than Yeah, it's all kids. It's all young young kids. There's murals everywhere. There's coffee shops, all hipsters. Yeah, because yeah, like back Williamsburg, in the yeah. back in the day when I went to Fremont, that area, yeah, it, it was like people would be like, Are you sure you want to go there? Yeah, it's terrible. I went to UNLV. Oh all, wow, okay. So I lived there a couple of years and during that time Fremont was a nightmare. Yeah. But then now it's a total like hipster. Like really? a bunch of artists, a bunch of like that. dive bars, Murals. a lot of yeah, like it's fucking cool little dope. places there. Oh, it wow. feels like Echo Park mm -hmm. or like or Williamsburg. Oh. You know, it feels like that that young. It's definitely coming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the area is coming up. So I don't know if I'll be there forever. I didn't buy the house, but for now, with the Corona and with my parents and wanting to like get a new energy, it feels right. Yeah, mm -hmm. and there's so many stages there. So when when stuff opens up again. I could pop pop in wherever. Can and you like because cool. I know that and those flying out of Vegas is so much better than flying out of LAX. Yeah. yeah. You know. But can I ask about the clubs though though because those clubs are all like book headliner clubs. Can you just do guest spots? Yes. Oh, you can. Yeah, during the week. Oh, during the week. So if I was yeah. there, if I lived there, for yeah. instance, and I wanted to go up every night, could I? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, there's tons of, and there's rooms also that aren't those rooms that I mentioned, just random rooms. All right. That are all over. So it's cool, and there's a lot of really nice, and it's a small community. I mean, you got, you see, people think Las Vegas, they think of the strip. That's just one, that's like a couple miles. But after that, well, you know, yeah. there's tons around it. There's Whole Foods and gyms and, yeah. and everything. Summerlin, is, there's Henderson. Yeah, there's it's so fucking many, nice, like, dude. Um, like um, residential areas. there's no areas. traffic ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no traffic, so it's pretty cool. And obviously taxes, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And you can get the houses there and stuff is a lot less expensive, though. So yeah. it's cool for now. I got a lot of different shows that I'm producing out of there, which is fun for me. So I got my sweating with the wheeze, which is my <laughs> which is my workout show. Yeah, you know what I mean? I do. I put that out and I got Polyoki, <laughs> which yeah. is my band. And I have a band out there. But the one thing that you I know that you love. Yeah that they probably don't have mm. is a Korean spa. Yeah, but I, I bought a, I bought a spa. <laughs> 
Oh, that's that's the solute. There's a that's solution solution. to every answer. Yeah, no, you I fucking buy it. Can two, just buy no, two weeks spot. ago, two weeks ago, it got delivered. It's a barrel sauna. Yeah, you just put it. It's the whole wooden one, right? Exactly. Yeah, that you it's put a outside. Big barrel sauna. Mm-hmm. I'll hook you up with the you, spot. I know, um, because my buddy who lives in Vegas just bought one for his house, and it's a six person one. Yes, but is it? Is it a dry sauna? A dry it's a sauna. It's a dry sauna you put in the backyard. Oh. Yeah, but it's dope. And then I also put the wet steam in my shower. So I got I got a wet I, I got a wet steam too. Oh, I see. So you got a wet steam in the shower and then you got a dry sauna outside. But you know what's missing though? A bunch of old Korean. naked Korean men. Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask you. <laughs> if you, if you wanted to yeah, come. Yeah. Because come. you know we love that spa. Yeah. Yes. You, und- you haven't been there since yes, the pandemic. Yes, I have. Since the pandemic? Yeah, it's open. It's it's open. Yes. <laughs> oh Going shit. there after here. Are you really? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh shit. I've been there like I've been been in L.A. for about three days now. I've been there twice. <laughs> okay, so um, I can't go. Right? I can't go. I can't go. Okay. All right. That's your I, problem. That's what I <laughs> I know. But hey, I dude, just you don't have coronavirus because if I don't fucking have it, you don't have it. Yeah, I don't have tested. it. I've been tested. I, I know it's tested. not the problem that if you have it. The problem is. I don't know what these Kore- old Korean men, if they have it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right? I don't want to go into a steam room with a, bu- with a bunch of old, naked old Korean men. I'm sure. I will say, though, that compliance-wise, yeah. as a culture, yeah. Koreans have it down. I would be less afraid to go into a Korean establishment yeah. than any other establishment because they just, they're, they're all, they all wear masks and they all agree that it's just something you do. Yeah, yeah. Huh. So you go there. Is it busy? Yeah, it's the same. Yeah. But it's cool. Like, but you know, so I, I sold a show, right? <coughs> uh, yeah, okay. You know what it's about, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, the sauna time, right? Yeah, sauna. Sauna, sauna time. time. That's a better name. Yeah. I, know. Yeah, 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 I told yeah. him he can have yeah. that name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I came up with that a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. I, you can have that name. Thank oh, you. Sauna, sauna time. time. I sauna time. Yeah. Sauna time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sauna But time. I sold sauna time. Wow. Yeah, it's a Korean family running a Korean spa, like that spa. That well, you got to have me as a guest. We will, of course, spot. we will. Yeah. You, you were one of the when they pitched a show, um, that was the premise. It was like you have random non-Koreans show up, and you, yeah, you're one of like the, and the, you were one of them, one of Good. them, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. But it's um because I, that's one of the things that I miss probably the most. Is you know what I mean those not times. not being able to go to, to the go sauna. that hyun, that hyun sauna that spa. Holly, I want to go back to your workout videos. Yeah, like, do you just record them? Where do you record them from? Who does them with you? And what kind of workouts are they? Well, and where it, how do I subscribe? <laughs> <laughs> you just you lock into my my social media on Monday mornings, and we release a new video. And I have a a, a dance floor in my backyard, uh-huh. and I have a girl that I you know that I work out with, and it's just like you know it's a five minute you know. Sweating with the wheeze, you know. Oh, oh there it is. So, yeah, there look it at is. that. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, 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 it's legit. Yeah. <laughs> it's legit. But I'm not joking. I'm like really working out. And the girl that is is doing it with me, she's not, <laughs> she's not a stripper. She's like a legit dancer. Yeah. <laughs> she's like in the show, in the you know, in the fantasy or the crazy girls where these are like trained dancers. Yeah. So I kind of do my version, and then she follows me, and then I follow her, and we, you know, we do the workout thing. Oh wow! Yeah, it's fun, and you and you probably you you look great. Thank you. No, I'm being real. Thank you. Because in a pandemic, I I always assumed that you would have bloomed up a bit. No, but you look fitter no, than I've ever seen you. Yeah, the reason why I think because I stopped touring. Ah, mm. uh, you know when you the tour, garbage. you're on a plane, you're the eating garbage. fucking you know chicken sandwiches with French fries. And <laughs> just chicken. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. And that has a lot to. I'm not going to be touring as much anymore, even when the pandemic is finished. Mm. Why? I just don't want to do it as much. Hey guys, we're gonna take a really quick break to share about these amazing sponsors. Magic spoon. <laughs> Magic spoon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as a child, um, I grew up with eating cereals. Yeah. And you know, um, I, I even as a child, I, I thought to myself, "Wow, this doesn't seem healthy." Nah. It, it would bog me down. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Chock full of chock sugar. full of stuff, man. You know, what I mean? it, you know, it's not healthy. But as soon as when I when I found out that Magic Spoon was our sp- sponsor yeah. right i got so excited because magic spoon right um has flavors that's very reminiscent of the old flavors ah. that i grew up you know eating yeah right but i know it's grain free mm-hmm. and i know that it's so much healthier right now i can revisit my childhood experiences by eating cereal again yeah it's so it's uh you cut down on the carbs yeah cut zero sugar 11 grams of protein 
and three net grams of carbs each serving. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then look at the flavor flavors. Cocoa, love it. Fruity. Mm. Who doesn't love fruity? Right? Frosted. Yes, Bobby. And don't forget blueberry. It tastes amazing. Honestly, too good to be true. Zero sugars. That's what I said. Eleven grams of protein. It's incredible. Only three net grams of carbs in each uh, in each serving. It's keto friendly. Oh man. Gluten free. Glu grain free. Soy free. Stop. Low carbs. Oh, GMO free. God. GMO free. My God. Honestly, guys, <laughs> Magic, Magic Spoon is so delicious. Yeah. You're gonna love it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Go to magicspoon.com slash belly yeah. to grab a variety pack and try it today. You can get all of it, right? Yeah. And be sure you use your promo code belly at checkout to get free shipping. And Bobby, guess what? Magic Spoon is so confident in their product. Yeah. It's back with a 100% mm. happiness guarantee. You'll never be sad, sir. So if you don't like it for any reason, hey. they'll refund your money. No questions asked. That's magicspoon.com slash belly and use the code belly for free shipping. We thank Magic Spoon for sponsoring the podcast. Hymns, dude. I love hymns. I have a friend, okay, mm -hmm. right, who was losing his hair, yeah. right, and he he put plugs in. Oh, right. Man. He looks crazy fake, mm -hmm. right. There are other ways of doing it, okay. Way, way better way. Sixty six percent of men start to lose their hair by the age of thirty five. She's laughing at that friend. That's I'm not. Right. I think yeah, it's yeah. it's whatever you want. Once to you notice thin okay. hair, it can be too late, right? <laughs> You can look like a freak, a mutant, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like a, my, what my friend did, right? <laughs> but it's that hairline slowly starting to move backwards. Any bald spots yet? The best way to prevent more hair loss is to do something about it while you still have some. Please. Why do you guys turn to weird solutions or do nothing like my freak friend? And they turn into to medicine, turn to medicine and science. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> say that one more time. You right. guys, um, forhims.com, a one stop shop for hair loss, skin care, sexual wellness for men. It's time to write a new chapter, one in which you have hair. No snake oil pills no. or gas station counter supplements, prescription solutions backed by science. Yes. No more awkward in person doctor visits or long pharmacy lines. For hims connects you to licensed medical professionals online, which could save you hours, completely confidential and discreet. Today, 4 is giving you their best offer yet. If you're not happy with your results after 90 days, Hims will give you a full refund. And right now, our Tiger Belly listeners can get their first visit absolutely free. Go to 4 slash belly. That's 4 slash belly. Disclaimer, full refund of price paid available for first 90 days supply. Refund requests must be made between 90 and 100 day, 180 days after product shipment delivered. Prescription products require an online consultation with a medical professional who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. Prescriptions apply. See website for full details and important safety safety information. Remember, that's 4 slash belly. Enjoy the rest of the show. You know, yeah, I was hitting it hard, dude. I know. I you think that's what a lot of... So we had Joe Coy on, and then we had Annie Letterman on, and now you. You're the third person to say that, you know, you're going to probably scale it back when things go back pull to it normal. Back yeah. Yeah, pull it back. And then plus in Vegas, if I can get, you know, a room there, maybe book every other weekend. Oh, there. that'd be cool. You know, small residency. Yeah, there, yeah. You know, nothing too crazy, but... But also your tours, though, uh, and I've... Here's... I want to say this is you've given me, um, number one, I want to say, just off for the record, since we're being recorded. Why do you say off for the record? What the fuck is this? isn't a deposition. <laughs> I know, I know, but, <laughs> so we're being recorded, so I just want to say, for the record, I want to say, right? I like you, dude. You're I love my you. friend. I, lo <laughs> I want to touch your slanty I know you, almond I, eyes, dude. I know you, I know you do. <laughs> but you like Mike, Mike Tran? You like him? I like him a lot. He's yeah. cool. But for the record, I want to say that... Um, Paul is, um, I mean, we've, you've done our pods, but people know, right, that you and your family started my career, you specifically. You found me in San Diego, and I really appreciate it. I miss our times going, getting naked with you. I've seen your genitals so many times. I love it. It's delicious. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful, you know, I've, you know, I've raved about your genitals. Yeah, just get to the punchline. I, there's no punchline. Okay, so what were you no trying to say? I want. I also want to say that uh, I'm just no. This is for. I just want to express this about, you know. What I mean, seeing you here, and then you put me in your movie, mm. um, Guest House. It was it. It was a big success, mm. and I'm proud of you because, um, you know, you. Oh yeah, that. This is what my point was. Is is that you've shown me the way, mm. right? In terms of how, like I, I'm not really dreadful. I'm not dreading the future mm. because you found 
I know a financial path mm. throughout my life by watching you. Mm. You mean work in the business, mm. you know, like some of the tours that you've done. Like mm. for me, it's like, you know, I remember coming to you going, oh, I just I play these cities and it's so much pressure. And I'm like, I can't draw because mm. every weekend, you know, what I mean, they have a huge name. You know what I mean? And every, people don't go to clubs every weekend, right? Mm. And so you've, you, some of the t- tours that you do are off the beaten path. Yeah, tertiary markets. What do they call them? They're called tertiary markets. Tertiary markets. Like where? Like, what, where? like the third tier. <laughs> I know, but what, do you play like... Like Muskegon, Michigan. Yeah. You know, or Those like just towns. random, yeah, random Peoria, Illinois. Yeah, 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 yeah. Does like Peoria have a club? Yeah. Yeah. And Juke, so- jukebox. It's called Jutebox? Yeah. Yeah. And so you can play these other towns that don't necessarily have huge headliners coming in. Yeah. Right? And and I was I when watching you over the years, going, that's what I'm gonna do. Mm. Right? Mm. And it gives you kind of like this hope, you know what I mean? Almost. It's a weird thing where you think, because you know, how do you how long can you keep it up? You know what I mean? There's uh, careers go up and down and side to side. And then you, well, dr- yeah, well, you're, you know, you know, Michael Rotenberg said this many years ago. It was my manager a while ago. It's about talent. If you're talented and you keep pushing, look at dice. It's a great example. He just kept pushing, pushing, pushing. And if you keep going, talent always wins. So it's like, as long as it's inside of you and you love, you love, what, obviously you fucking love what you do yeah. and you just keep doing it. You're going to get your movies. You're going to get your thing. I always said you're going to make it. I mean, the fact that your podcast is so popular is not surprising to me. Wow. You know, everyone, everyone has different paths. Everyone does different things. I was on with Segura and Christina and it's the same thing with them because they were talking about my career. Like you were talking about my career. I'm like, yeah, but now you guys are the ones that are doing it because you've hit into this situation here. You've been doing it five years, more than that, right? Mm -hmm. How long? Five, five Five years. years You guys got like a massive fucking hit. Yeah. We got to just You keep going, you know, this this is her. She started it. I know. I, I know. No, because I but you were because when you were saying what you said to me is that you couldn't draw. You know what right. I mean? You were frustrated. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then like about two years ago, you're like, dude, I'm fucking kind of drawing now because of my podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now here we are. You don't have to tour because you're doing well off your fucking podcast. Yeah. And you kept pushing it. And that's the same with Segura. And so you got to keep going. So like the the pass that I took is just I enjoy it. You know what I mean? I enjoy it. I enjoy making people happy. I enjoy being out there. Uh, you th- I'm not getting paid to do sweating with the fucking wheeze. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not yeah, getting yeah. paid to do the polyoki show, <laughs> but I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fucking fun, dude. Yeah. And I almost don't want to get fucking paid. <laughs> You know what I mean? Because when you start getting paid, then it starts getting weird. Yeah, yeah, People are like, fuck, you're making all this cash now off of fucking just dancing like a moron. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? So it's like you almost want to keep it just for your, you know, for the, you know, part of of your life just to feel it. But but also what's cool about you is, and this is what I've noticed, is you're not like um, some of these other guys that, you know, that, you know, are up here. You, you're, you can, you hang out with common people. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I put. I'm. I'm very. Um, uh, uh, not. It's not called visible, but I'm very tangible. Like you can see me everywhere. I. I go everywhere. Yeah, but also yeah. you work with people that are like regular people, mm. and you give them joy in their lives. Mm. Like even the guys here in Silver Lake that you were doing it with. Like that. What's his name? Not Bill. Larry. Bill. Bill. It was the balding old man. Yeah, the little Larry. <laughs> yeah, the David. little Larry. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Bill, right? Mm. A guy like that, you put so much joy into that guy's life. Yeah. Because one day he's at a coffee shop, right, or whatever. Yeah. And you walk up to him and go, I'm the wheeze or whatever, yeah, right? Yeah. And I then you're like, that. and I was like, come here, dude, you gotta be next to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's you like gotta... this tall. I'm like, holy fuck. <laughs> and yeah. then I find out he fucking plays guitar and he's like fucking talented as fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like a sweetheart. But you changed that yeah. guy's life. He's just yeah. a guy who's drinking hanging coffee one day, yeah, hanging out, of, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's what's cool about you. I shit my pants today. <laughs> Tom Segura did as well. He today? shit his pants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, text. Why him. did you shit your pants? Well, tell him what happened. Well, I had a doctor's appointment today, and he was nice enough to drive me there. And then somewhere along the, by the Beverly Center, uh-huh. it was like a sudden attack. It was like, I have to shit right now. And so we pull up right next to my, in front of my doctor's office. First of all, she doesn't even know where the fuck the doctor's office is. She's like, this 
It's a new one. I hadn't been there, Polly. So we park and I was like, you're not going to shit in the back seat. So go inside the, um, the office and ask to use their bathroom. But since it's COVID, mm. they said no. Wow. So wow. Um, I just walked just away. Shit. Yeah, you I shit didn't on even the help. cement like all the homeless people. That's what I, I was like, please, for the love of God, do not cement, shit. Right? Do not shit in the car. And I was like, just shit outside right in the gutter. Yeah. But he opted On to- La Cienega? Are you out of your fucking mind? So the, 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 the busiest street so in America? <laughs> you can pull over at like a la- the lingerie store on La Cienega around the corner. People probably shit over there all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would just, I inside the car is my You know my what's last. great about your guys' relationship is that it is such a real fucking like, there's, there's no, um, uh, What's the word? You guys, you guys are very um, open about your relationship because whenever, anytime I've been in a relationship, I never looked at my girlfriend and being like, "Yeah, when I was shitting, shitting, shitting." Like Tom Segura and his girl always talking about shitting too. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys are like, this is crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's like when you're in, dude. Yeah, I'm in. You're like fucking like too far. all in. Right? <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah, we're, we're a little too far, too far in. Yeah. But so she goes. I just walked away. She she walks away. She walks away just down. Well, I'll, right? I'll tell like, you like why like I walked away. Like a fucking bastard. Typically in the past, because I'm super codependent, I would always be the person to try to find a solution. Mm. And at this point, I'm like, you know what? There's nothing I can do. If he's dead set on shitting in the back seat, I'm not going to fight him because he's already. It's not that, it's, 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 you act as if. But I'm trying to give uh, you, you credit No, but here. you act as if I have choices. You do. Just uh, anywhere get but out. the car. Yeah, just get out. Because I have to drive 30 minutes back home with you with now a big pile of shit in There's the back seat. There's definitely a difference between shitting in the car and pissing in the car. Yeah, no okay. shit. <laughs> no shit. No shit. Okay. Yeah. But this is how I know he's grown a lot in the last year oh, because at all the previous times he's just bare assed it right on the back seat mm. but this time around he found a, an old trader joe's plastic no, bag no 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 they're not plastic the what? fancy ones which one paper bag the those paper? Fans, no the fancy trader oh my god my trader joe's yeah. bag in the both insulated of them. bag both of them. The reusable bag. The reusable, the oh, nice man. one. Okay. Well, the cloth one. You know, I appreciate that. That's how I know he's so been he, through. Yeah, he shed two in the bag. I don't even know where they came from. So where right? did you wind up shitting? In one of the fancy Trader Joe in bags. In the back of your Prius. In the back of my Prius. Right. And I, I cupped it, right? Like this. So I had both handles like this, <laughs> right? So I had my both that and, and, and I had my ass like this. And I knew... The target was in the right spot. Yeah. And then it was just like a fudge factory. Oh, and then the uh, other Trader Joe's what did bag. You wipe your ass with it. The, the other Trader Joe's bag. I used it was cotton. It had cotton. All her bags? Oh, yeah, yeah. So I wiped it. Then I put the other one in there, right? Yeah. And I, I left it in front of the, 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 the office that didn't let me use their bathroom. That's perfect. Well, that's a comedic way. Yeah, I, yeah, that's dude, uh, yeah, yeah. Dude, I one time, too. yo, I one time shit in a fucking trash can in a manager's office at a comedy club in New Mexico. <laughs> Really? Yeah, because there was no no for real. I was about I was it was back in the Wee's days. It was crazy. Yeah, it was a comedy club in New Mexico, <sighs> and um, and there was two shows. And you know the comedy clubs don't have um, bathrooms in the office, or there's no green room. So the only bathroom you can use is what. Where the patrons are. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. For the audience, there's so many clubs like that. I can't even. Yeah. So you're sitting there in the fucking manager's office yeah and i'm like going fuck i gotta take a shit da, 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 da. yeah and i'm like <laughs> fuck it yo i got the trash here sh- give me that trash can right there mm-hmm. like <laughs> no it looked like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah it looked like this trash can yeah yeah right yeah it's like this this trash can i was like literally this is probably the same trash can but can you see it yeah yeah, yeah. can you see it so i got a trash can like that i put a bag in it you know like the hefty bag thing or whatever yeah and i just lean i just shit in it yeah. And I tied it really tight. And then when I was on stage, I guess the, the owner found out that I did it. Because oh. I guess it smelled. But I had tightened it. I tightened it really tight. And I didn't think so. Yeah. And then he found out. And then when I tried to book myself the next year, he's like, no. And I got blackballed from that club for shitting in the trash can. And I said, what you're going to say is like, where am I supposed to shit? Yeah. Where the fuck? I know. That's where we think. But he didn't think that way. Yeah. What people don't realize, you know, at least for me, right? I have all the same equipment as you guys do in terms of bodily function, mm-hmm. yeah. right? Human. I have little legs, you know what I mean, that work, <laughs> little vessels. Strong. You know what I mean? yeah. Fair, thank you. They're strong. Thank you. I have a sphincter muscle, right? Mm-hmm. And all the, But for some reason, sometimes because maybe because of my diet, right, that I have these sudden urges and I cannot stop it. Mm. It's like it's coming, mm-hmm. right? And there's almost nothing better 
feeling wise than taking a shit. Especially if you really have to shit. Oh, it's the best. It's like nothing bad. It goes also, coming, speaking of taking coming shit, and then shitting. Yeah, speaking of taking a shit, my friend Chris Catan. Oh yeah, yeah. He wants you to. He wants to be on your show. <laughs> oh, I know he does. <laughs> I know he does. I was I'm just, and I love Chris. <laughs> nice plug. And and two weeks ago I called him and he didn't call me back. And there we so go. So tell him right now. Yeah, Chris. He's Chris, like, I called you. Two it's weeks his fiftieth birthday <gasps> today. Oh, happy birthday, Chris! Yeah, yeah. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, Chris, Chris Catan. Chris Catan. Funny dude. He's nuts, but he's a sweetheart. I know. I love him. And he's, he's sober ador- now. He's adorable. He's been sober. That's the thing. People think he's fucked up. You know, he hurt himself with his neck. And so, you know how why he was so fucked up? Whatever he was fucked up on, mm-hmm. because when he was on Saturday Night Live, he ate shit really bad, mm-hmm. and his whole neck is fucked, dude. Oh, uh, like his whole—he's got like the weird spleen. Like he's like this, and it's from a surgery or something. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I but, love Chris. Yeah, he's. You know what I mean? But it's like you know, um, I'm gonna have him on. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Did he ask he, you to tell me? Yes. Yeah. But yeah. Chris, if you're listening, dude, I fucking love you, and also I'm proud of him. Yeah. Because you know, sometimes over the years when I saw Chris Catan, right? I would I it, I would think to myself, yeah, he's not sober. Mm. There's something he's has wild eyes, right? <laughs> right, you know, he has the yeah. just the wild eyes, right? And now when I see him, I can hundred percent look at him and go, yeah. Wow, he's really doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's just clearer, right? He also you can tell that he has sort of an urgency about his career, like mm-hmm. he's trying to do things. Good. And make things happen. So, like, we we're going to get hey, George, put his name and, down. And then also another thing, like I said earlier, talent is talent. He's a fucking funny guy. Dude. Yeah. Yeah, I know. He's a movie star. You know, Night of the Roxbury. Yeah, I know. Uh, no yeah. shit. Don't, you don't have yeah. to. You're, yeah, you're preaching to the preacher. Yeah, and he's a sweet preacher, man. Yeah. yeah. So, Chris, what, what there you the, go. The term, I like that one. Is that it? You're preaching, preaching to, to the, the preacher. preacher. Yeah. Preaching yeah. to the preacher. Yeah, yeah. But what's, what's the term, the real term? Preaching to the choir. Exactly. You're preaching to the preacher. Yeah. I was. Yeah. I was thinking about just like what a problem like shitting has been during COVID. So mm. Like you can't just shit anywhere. Uh, and I think that there should be yeah. like like a, a, a petition or some type of like the governor of California should like normalize emerg- emergency shitting yeah. in public. Yeah. Like if you're not going to allow us to shit in your like, yeah. you know, business. Yeah. Then you should not fine us if we have to shit in the middle of someone's. Wait, life. wait, wait, wait. You can get f- if I'm. Le- le- yes, you can get fined. Fine. Of yeah. course. Bobby. Gavin it's a san- what? Gavin Newsom. Yep. It's a sanitary. Gavin. Issue. It's a it's a sanitary issue because shit carries, you know. OK, but if I'm shitting in a plastic like bag. That. Right. And I tighten it like the way he tightens. Yeah. His, right. Is that still? Can I still get? If I'm in an alley, yeah, they way, can do it for like public. And a cop, see. an officer exactly. comes up to me and no, goes, like if "Excuse me, it. sir, what are you doing?" Right? Like I, like and I I'm just, peed, like I peed in your bushes. Yeah, I did. You know, I before that. I before that. we came out, you and Theo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah. I peed in your bushes, <laughs> but I could get arrested for that if like a cop yeah. drove by, mm-hmm. just like it's it's indecent exposure. Yeah. And so just like if you shit in public, it's well, the same thing as can I pee in my own bush and get still fined? Probably, if they saw your dick from the street. Well, it looks more like a pussy, probably, right? <laughs> wow. She you laughs. still about your mom thing? <laughs> I feel mad. I feel like, I feel like you deserve that, that one. Resentment? Yeah, yeah. Resentment? I feel like there's like a deep-seated <laughs> resentment. Yeah. So how has, been, how has the pandemic been for you guys? I mean, I know you said it's been great. I don't know about great, but well, we we've, we've haven't done anything. It, yeah. You know, for me... Um, it's like I've said this before and I'll just briefly touch upon it. It's um, there was a little bit of a relief there just in terms of like, um, you know, I spent a lot of time comparing myself with other people and the pandemic has sort of put people, you know, back on, you know, the starting line, starting, starting, line, yeah, starting everyone's line. Equal again. Everyone's equal again. Yeah, almost. Yeah. yeah. You don't see a lot of like, you know. Ali Wong's in Paris shooting a movie. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and be like, how the fuck did I not? You know what I mean? Like, none of that. Those kind of thoughts. You know what I mean? You know, what the yeah. fuck is Steve Byrne didn't cast me in this thing? You know what I yeah. mean? And all you those still, thoughts. You still thought about all of that. Yeah, though. I still think about it. You know what I mean? But like, even you know, when you're not allowed to work, he's still thinking about <laughs> it. Yeah, no. But like, so that sort of subsided, and it's um, you know, it's tested um my relationship with Kalila. Yeah, because we're not used to being in each other's space. Every day, mm. you know, he goes on the road two, three times a month. Mm. We have that break apart. It's that we have a nice little reunion. Mm. But 
you know, being, having to cook every single day mm. and having to play sort of this like really like housewife role. Mm -hmm. Cause I, we have a teenager living with us as well. You have a teenager? Yeah, we have yeah. a teenager. My Ooh. niece, my niece lives with us. Oh yeah. yeah so, so having to transition from like, kind of like doing my own thing to now making sure that like everyone's like fed and mm -hmm. taken care of. And, yeah. and then also it depend and like we moved to this house and then the pandemic happened. And then the panda came out in you. <laughs> And then the panda came out. <laughs> the panda. <laughs> yeah. But I want to say also this, okay, that I honestly, right, I honestly believe there is no one else out there that I ever want to be with mm. aside from her. I mean, from uh, her. <laughs> you, oh, yeah. I do. Yeah. She's the only one that I can ever fathom spending the rest of my life with. I, I love her so fucking much, mm. right? I love everything about her, even the complexities and her character defects. But you know, Polly, I convince people that I'm this average person, right? But deep down, we have really similar backgrounds. I know he's a comedy store comic, and that's a very dark place, but where I came from might have been even darker. So mm -hmm. we we do connect in a way where it's like, I understand why he's all sorts of messed yeah. up, and he understands why I'm all sorts yeah. of messed up. But we have that shared responsibility of, do we elevate our practice as a couple? Do we elevate ourselves? Or do we just stay down in this fucking, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. shithole we've been? Yeah, because you know, like, it's like a moment to moment shift to try to get better. Yeah. yeah. And what you guys don't know is I actually had a conversation with George about your guys' relationship before the show. <laughs> Are you, are you, are you no, being let me, real? Let me finish. Let me finish. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me, no, 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 is that no. real? Let me fucking finish. Wait, 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 wait. George, George, George. Let me finish. Let me fucking finish my sentence. He's doing the setup. Let me fucking finish my sentence. Let me finish my sentence. He says, listen, that their relationship is on the rocks. And he <laughs> says, the only person that can. You notice how it's turned into, I'm your therapist? <laughs> And now I'm here talking to you. This isn't a podcast about guest house and the comic store documentary <laughs> and how's the road. This is turning about you guys how to better yourself. I've talked to your drama ther trauma <laughs> therapist. I've talked to all of them. What's her, what's her name? Her name's Cla Clarice. Clarice, okay. Clarice. Clarice. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, but I did you guys really have a conversation? No. Okay, okay. <laughs> but that was funny. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, but congratulations, you guys. So... So then I guess the next question is, when are you guys going to get married? Come to Vegas. I can marry you. I, there's an ordained preacher out there. Yeah. You get married by Elvis Presley. Come on, man. Let's go to Lala, man. Bali, man. Pray yeah. me, man. And you have a little fucking Chinese half Indian Spanish baby. You know? What's your nationality? Indian. What is it? Is it part, part Indian? Yeah. What, what kind of Indian? Part, yeah. I don't know. Cherokee? Yeah. <laughs> Are you part? Are you part? Are you part Indian? Or are you part Spanish or Italian? Filipino. Filipino? <laughs> He's like straight up cherry. Your eyes aren't like almonds, though, babe. I, 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 they're more like I, I, they're I, I, more like a peanut sauce, dude. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what, she, I went Asian. Nationality. Filipino. My Full. Mom's. Yeah. Full. And I no, she's. There. I'm half. I'm my my dad's French. My mom's Filipino, but I grew up in the Philippines. I was born there and I was raised there. Wow. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. I always wanted to go to the Philippines. You should. Oh, you would. They'd love you they there. Would, yeah. You would kill it. Great. Oh, oh, Chinese torture. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, this is okay. So little this is an idea, right? You know, Polly, I wanted to tell you that growing up, there was no bigger yeah. anything or mm. anybody or even on par with Michael Jordan than you in the Philippines. Mm, that's crazy. Like it yeah. was the idea of you, like you were the biggest thing in my childhood. I and was like the comedy version of Pacquiao. Bigger maybe. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. I have I've everyone has I'm seen everything. Like Rodriguez, over. bro. I should have went yes. to the fucking Philippines. The Philippines and I've how many you know times have I told you this? The documentary. I Rodriguez. love Rodriguez. What a fucking beautiful Six still. What, have you played him the music? I've I, I have I have all both all albums. Them. I love copy, it. Copy copy. So yeah, so the, so I'm like the i um, really? Uh I've, seriously, it would wow. be pandemonium. But Paul also, you know, Kalila and I we want we have another show that people are really interested in. And the show is the last time we were in the Philippines, we we I we woke up one day and go, let's just put on a talent show, right? Mm -hmm. So we 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 got a gymnasium, and we did it in one day, and the whole city showed up. Not the whole city; it was a small province, a small burn. I know, but everyone in this province showed up, right? <laughs> pack, pack, Manila. Kids, like four year old kids. Four year old kids. It's like midnight, <laughs> right? And we're doing this the craziest talent show awesome. you've ever seen, right? And so we want to pitch it as a uh, a show, you know what I mean? And we want judges, and we'll fly you out, and you'll be a judge. Wow, amazing! That'd be so fun. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah. When are you'll we love doing it. it? 
Well, I gotta first find a home for it. Huh. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'm down. But that's cool. I didn't know that. But so um, now awesome. Guest House, the movie that you starred in mm -hmm. with uh, Mike Castle. Yes. Uh, Punky, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Give her a round of applause. She got SNL. Isn't that cool? Amazing. How happy are you? Yeah, amazing. Amazing. So, and you, you know, P P Punky is somebody that, um, you know, we, she was a bartender at the store. She was raised at the store. And it's just a beautiful fucking thing, mm. right? So me and Punky play criminals in in your like, you know, right? Yeah, Henchmen, drug addicts, drug, drug addicts, addicts in yeah. your in your movie. You play my friends, yeah. Yeah, I play your friends, and um, you just gave me some good news that it's gonna go where? It's going on Netflix. Yeah, on, on oh. December eighteenth. December eighteenth, and then also DVD and Blu-ray on uh, November eleventh. That's amazing, dude. But yeah, this has been really good for me. I mean, it's like you know. I just did it. I worked hard on it. You did a part in it. Thank you so much. Of I course, appreciate of course. it. Of course. Eric Griffin was in it. Steve O's in it. And it turned into this raunchy, fun comedy that everyone really loved. And I saw it with a girlfriend of mine in um in Vegas. I just watched it. And it's fucking funny, dude. It's a good movie and it's dark. It's like a dark comedy. Yeah. In a in a place that's not dark, you know, because everyone's like scared now. Yeah. But we just said, fuck it. And we went in, and people really love it. So I'm glad it's going on Netflix. I'm glad more people will see it. And um, I miss acting. I love acting, and and it was great to do. It, you know, and you're fucking really funny in it. The stuff in the swing and shit, <laughs> dude. What's hilarious? Yeah, yeah. It's like a setup for Captured. The, the, oh. the film Captured because, dude, you're so funny, and you're on the swing, and you're like, <laughs> you're like, can I leave now? I'm like, no, 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 you can't leave. <laughs> but it's like you can feel you really don't want to be. <laughs> I know. Like for, I think I was saying, can I leave the set? <laughs> yeah, the set. <laughs> the set but also, can I go home? <laughs> no kidding. Also in the scene, yeah, you could see your face. You, yeah, besides you not wanting to be like in the scene, you no. want to not be on the set. No, because the guy yelled. At, <laughs> no, the guy yelled at me. What's his name from from the Titanic? Billy Zane. Billy Zane yelled yeah. at me. Oh, that's hilarious. Because remember, I so when I showed up at the set, right? Yeah. Uh, one of, some lady was like, let me give you a tour of the set. I didn't know they were shooting. Right. It's like, wow, there's a lot of extras here. I was talking to the lady. Right. And Billy Zane turns to me and he goes, shh. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, what the fuck? In my mind, I'm like, what the fuck? Right? Yeah. And he was like really mad. Oh, that's because so he's, he's like a care or like a, like a, what's it called? Miser technique kind of a, yeah, yeah, like yeah, a yeah actor. method actor. Yeah, method actor. Right. So then a li couple hours later, I see Billy Zane there, and I'm like, I think I want to apologize. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I, I'm a fan. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I walk up to him, and I go, hey, hey, Billy. And he kind of just turned away and walked away. Oh, it's <laughs> Right? And I just went, oh, man, this is not working out for me here. <laughs> That's fine. I mean, this is a nightmare. And then now we also have now on Showtime the documentary. Yes. What is yeah. it, what's it called? What's it called? It's called The Comedy Store, and it's a five-part series. And Mike Binder, um, who's one of my babysitters growing up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He started He started at the store. He was like one of the youngest comics there. He's 19 years old, and he worked. He d did The Tonight Show. He was literally one of my mom's favorite young comics. She loved Mike Binder, and um, he did Make Me Laugh, and he was just like killing it. And then they had a, a falling out at some point. And then he took off and just said he didn't want to do stand up anymore. And he started directing movies and directing TV shows and producing and stuff. And producing yeah. stuff yeah. and found his niche in that. And then, and then I guess he was on Mark Marin, I don't know, a while ago. And then that kind of reconnected to him in the store. And then, um, you know, I reached out to him and then, you know, he, he did a beautiful job. And yeah. And I think there's only, he was like the, probably, I think he's the only guy that could have pulled this off. Because not only is he a good director, he has the relationships and the trust from guys like you and me, and mm -hmm. you know and the other comics. So yeah, yeah he did a beautiful. He did a because beautiful Because Binder, job. you know, he also um, directed a Bill Burr special, the one in London, right? Mm -hmm. So he's a legitimate producer. He's a legitimate like comedian guy from the past too. Mm -hmm. He's he's so tied into the store yeah. that when you're talking to him, it's like talking to anybody, right? That's at the store, right? Yeah. So he and knows he knows all that. He, he knows, knows the, the he knows the culture. And, and and so to see Mike and his son and his crew there for that year mm. shooting was so cool, man. Mm -hmm. Like he would just like shoot something with me and or he would shoot you on stage and it was just like really cool. And you know what? It's like about time. Mm. They're doing something, you know, because you're, I, I was in a documentary when I first started that your brother tried to produce, remember? Called The oh, Main Room? Oh, Scott, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. Was, um, and it's probably really good. 
Yeah, yeah. If you yeah. look back on it now, it's when we first started. Yeah, yeah, when we first started. But yeah, it didn't find a home. No one ever fucking saw it. But I'm just yeah. so glad that this is out there. You know, you're having. Well, a good- it's a story. My mom's my mom's story. You know, is very fascinating to a lot of people because she was a lady that was at the right place at the right time, the right woman for the right you know era and the comics came out and she had just gotten the store after the divorce she was 40 years old when my mom got the store it's kind of late yeah yeah you know what i mean 40 and that's why i think she had gotten sick because you know she got sick in her late 60s early 70s because you know at 40 i want to say you're kind of slowing down but you're not as you're not in your like her her 20s and 30s she was miserable you know because she was in a relationship my dad was miserable and they had uh, my sister, my sister Scott, um, excuse me, my brother Scott and my sister Sandy. That was one part of my mom's life. And then Peter and me were like the other part of their life. And there were two separate lives. But the part that Peter and me were in was the, the life that she really enjoyed. Because my mom was from Wisconsin and she was like a bohemian and she was very um, artsy and, you know, very kind of like, you know, offbeat and... And she just was a natural at like developing. She started developing my dad's act way before she got the store. Mm. So when she got the store, it kind of was like like a jazz singer. Like she she felt her cadence. She felt her, you know, who she was. And then you know everyone showed up, and and it turned into you know it was the boom. Yeah, you know it was that boom. So you know I'm happy. You know I don't want anything ever to happen to the comedy store. You know I don't want it to ever get knocked down. Mm. You know I think it should be a Hollywood landmark. You know, and I think that it should just remain the Emerald City for comedians. Yeah. You know, so guys, younger guys, we can pay it forward. You know, you can pay it forward and, and you know, to the younger guys and they, they work the door and, and they look at Punky. Punky's a great example of someone that just started there. Yeah. And now she's on SNL. So yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, we, Leslie Jones was with somebody that, you know, I mean, was there for years. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's just, it, I, that's where the first time I ever performed was the San Diego comedy store, you know? And then, yeah. And then, um, so yeah, it's nice that, you know, it's out there. It'll always be a commercial for the store. Yeah. Uh, Cause I've been hearing rumors. People call me and go, yeah, it's done. The store. I mean, just people get, you know, they come up with these things. I don't even know where they get their information. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, you know, I think they're going to sell the property. The property is a lot of money. So you get these, I have these fears that it's no longer a fucking be there. But it it has to it I honestly, if that place ever fucking closed, I might fucking not do stand up again. Mm. Because it's so dude, it's such a big part of my life. It's like mm. when I go there, it's mm. it feels like literally like I'm going home. Yeah, you're like stepping in an old pair of shoes. Yeah, the sil- yeah. even like the silver or for you moccasins. I was racist. Sorry. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Asians don't wear moccasins. I, oh yeah, those are Indian. <laughs> I was yeah, at yeah. Her, that's right. why it didn't burn. It didn't burn because it didn't make any sense. You know what well, I mean? You know what I meant. What what, what kind of flip flops does Asians wear? Like Birkenstocks? Barefoot, maybe. Oh, barefoot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Village, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I think that I think <laughs> I think similar. I think similar to the world. I think once Donald Trump is gone. And I think once Whoa. All, of a sudden, all of a sudden they find the vaccine. And yeah, yeah. Joe Biden, you know, and Obama and Oprah are up there and, <laughs> you know, saying chill yeah. out. Yeah. And yeah. then I think, you know, just like the rest of the world is, we're going, yeah, I've never, everything's going to spew out. I've never talked to you about politics ever. Mm. I have, no, I really don't even know where you stand on things. I just don't like him. It's not his policies. I just think he's an agitator and he's like, you know, it's kind of he's kind of like that person. If you have a scab on your arm, yeah, he, he doesn't let it heal. He just keeps picking it. <laughs> That's a perfect. Yeah, yeah, that is perfect. That is perfect. You know, and it's yeah, like, yeah. The joke. It's even like I was with Ross, Jeff Ross. He was on my podcast yesterday, and he and he said the same thing. It's just like we. I think his shtick, the Donald Trump shtick, yeah. is old. There's nothing new that he's doing. He's like build a wall and this and that, and it's like it's like the same jokes. Right. You know, it's almost like he did a Netflix special like four years ago, and then he's got another one. It's like, dude, it's the same act. Y- yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, um, it's also like an act that didn't work. It's like you know, you can't say you're gonna do something when you didn't do it for the last four years. Yeah. Right. It's like the you know, I know we're not a poli- political podcast, but it's just. The wall, you know what I mean? It's like it's never was never built. Mexico didn't pay for it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I and, think it's there actually. 
I think there is the wall there. Part, There's a part lot, of the, yeah, in yeah, like yeah. a small chunk. Yeah, but we paid for it. Mexico didn't pay for it. Like yeah, the taxpayers pay. paid. Or he took. The, I think he took the uh, the budget out of like you know some defense army fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just think that you know he's you know it's interesting because all the world leaders he doesn't get along with except uh -huh. for Kim Jong Un. <laughs> <laughs> fucking the Saudi Arabian dude and Putin. Yeah, Those yeah. Are the only guy. Yeah, like yeah. maybe the guy from Brazil too. Yeah. Oh, does he like that guy too? <laughs> yeah. So. Oh no, but that's you it. know what? Duterte. And Duterte from the Philippines. Duterte, yeah. Yeah, Great those cast. are the, and those are all Great the team. people that are just gnarly. <laughs> Dictators. You know I mean? But he doesn't get along with Germany or London or France <laughs> or any of these people that are allies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? In the Paris Accord and the uh, you know and the Green and all this stuff, he's just. I don't know. With Obama, I felt we were moving forward, and then with him, I think it was like ten steps back. Oh, a lot, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And, it just um, doesn't feel right. No, I just and, that's a, that's what it is. And even I think the Trump supporters should be like, man, I'm. It's like, don't vote for dude. You're wearing a mask, bro. There's obviously a. He's not. Don't vote for him. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> we're, we're all stuck on these fucking masks. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah. Because I mean? yeah, yeah. at the end of the day, people are like, well. You know, he's it's his not he's not the reason why there's there's the coronavirus. Like, OK, but I also think he's the reason why we still have the coronavirus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he didn't manage it properly. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because he doesn't admit that it even exists. He just called the scientists retarded. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? He maybe didn't use those words, but yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah he just yeah, said yeah. Fauci's retarded. <laughs> guy's retarded. You know what I mean? He just said, yeah, like, yeah. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You can't say I'm the man with the economy because you're driving down the street. People don't have fucking jobs. Dude. Yeah, it's, it's a fucking sad. nightmare. It's a nightmare. You know what I mean? I mean, it, it, we drove by where I used to live on Beachwood and one of those Hollywood underpasses. Yeah, the, and it's, the it's, encampment. It's, 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 really an, it's an encampment. Now. It's like, you know what I mean? And it's like, I've never seen Hollywood look like that before. Yeah. It's just tents upon tents. And people are just living out inside. It's just like, yeah, yeah. And CNN, you know, CNN. You watch them. I don't want to say they're, you know, they're no, they're no angels either because they keep pounding. Every time you watch it, it's like three more thousand people dead. We, we know, bro. It's like <laughs> got it. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. you don't have to keep pounding it because yeah. they, they just want us to just be fucking miserable from all this stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, I th could it be that we just they're just trying to get the facts out so that you know we as citizens can. Um, but there's be, a point take where care of our own there's a point Keep where you over yeah and over you're and right. Over it's like and over and just how many times it's like we already know and also, the trend. When we grew up, the news reporters they just reported the news. They didn't have an opinion about the mm -hmm. news, right? And that's what I don't like. Yeah, you see, like guys like, like Dom, Dom Lemon. Lemon. Yeah, he like, has an roll opinion. his fucking eyes every fucking <laughs> every report. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's like, dude, we know you don't fucking like the guy, yeah. and then everyone is just so like, dude, just do your fucking job, bro. Read the fucking teleprompter. Don't yeah. roll your fucking eyes after you say it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Spread the news. Yeah, you know, you know. But he'll be gone. I don't think he's not. I, there's no way. Hey, guys, I'm going to take a really quick break to share some amazing sponsors with you. Better help. You guys, um, during this pandemic, this service has saved my life. Mm -hmm. You know, um, this is a great service. And it, it, it's um, I think that therapy um, is so important in, in times like these. And um, this is a very affordable um, therapy. It's the best online therapy you can get. Yeah, um, you can start communicating in under forty-eight hours. I've had five people in my life use this specific service, mm -hmm. and they, they're in love with it. Okay, and I urge everyone listening: if you have problemas, mm -hmm. right, get get help. Mm. Okay, better help has a broad range of expertise available, which may not be local, locally available in many areas, but it is available to clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor. Wow. You get timely and thoughtful responses, plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. They also match you up with the right gut person. Mm -hmm. you know, they don't force it down your throat, man. There's some options. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so that they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. It's more exactly affordable than met. traditional on offline counseling, and financial aid is available. Visit their website and read their testimonials that are posted daily. Oh, cool. 
Tell us more about it, Gil. Well, also, you can visit betterhelp.com slash belly. That's better H-E-L-P and join over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. Special offer for Tiger Belly listeners. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com. I implore you. Betterhelp.com slash belly. I implore you. He implores you. You guys, um, native. Woo. <laughs> Woo. Native. You guys, native, I, I don't usually like deodorant. That's true. I don't usually l- like, because I don't feel like it ever works for me. Yeah. Right? But I've been using native for the last four months, mm-hmm. right? And it is something that I look forward to putting that stuff in my armpits. Take it from someone who actually sweats a lot in her armpits. She's a sweat machine. I have hyperhidrosis. Yeah. And there are certain types of deodorants that just don't work well. Like it, it it's the wrong scent or it turns your own scent into Against you. Else. Yeah, and yeah. I also don't like aluminum. I have like an adverse reaction to it. Native is all natural. Yeah. And it um, smells wonderfully. You smell my armpits a lot. I, I used to dread her armpits. Hated it. Yeah. Almost it used left to be her. like, almost yeah, left it was like, I almost left her, but I'm like, I can bear with it now. It's delicious. Mm-hmm. You all know? thanks to because, Native. Because it has vanilla. It has the smells that Papa likes. Uh-huh. What are the ingredients? I love um, coconut oil. Vanilla. Vanilla. Turmeric. I like turmeric. Yeah. Uh-huh. Blood you orange. Know, and clove. I love blood orange. Clove. Right? Uh-huh. I love all... Smells so good. And uh, when I listen, I smell her pits, you know? Smell my pits. Yeah. No, hang on. Let me put them on real quick. Yeah, I've already smelled them. No, but smell them again. Okay. I let need smell. you to. And yeah, check out the latest press release surrounding the p- plastic free launch. It's great. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. All right. Native plastic free deodorant is, deodorant is made from 100% paperboard and 0% plastic. Mm. The plastic free deodorant will be available in five different scents for men and women coconut and vanilla, lavender and rose, mm. cucumber and mint, charcoal, and citrus. <laughs> I'm sorry, what happened? Oh, what's so funny? He There's did. a way you can pronounce charcoal, charcoal. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was so rude. Yeah, it's yeah, charcoil. Yeah, the, the yeah, whatever you he want. He smells your be. armpits. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's so rude. <laughs> charcoil <laughs> <laughs> and citrus and herbal musk. Okay. The durant will also be shipped in a plastic-free bag oh, wow. made from 100% recycled paper. They're doing stuff for the earth. Native is risk-free to try. Every product comes with free shipping within the U.S. plus 30-day returns and exchanges. See why so many people love Native and check out over 14,000 five-star reviews. Tell us more about it, Gil. Do what I did. Make the switch to Native today by going to nativedo.com slash belly or use promo code belly at checkout and get 20% off your first order. That's nativedo.com slash belly or use promo code belly at checkout for 20% off off your first order get native enjoy the rest of the show i'm gonna have this trump impersonator who was on my podcast yeah we're gonna do a live stream <laughs> oh with the map of america there yeah yeah we're gonna we're gonna i'm gonna be like dude you're losing you're losing so he's gonna lose with me physically there <laughs> <laughs> because this guy is such a good impersonator i, have yeah, I think one. i saw him yeah dude, yeah he is fucking he's a comic yeah his name's john and he fucking kills it so I'm like, dude, on the night of the fucking of the election, we're doing a live stream. He's like, awesome. Oh, that's cool. So because he's going to lose. And because I think what's going to happen, he's going to get thrown in jail or I think he's going to like fly to Russia and he's going to hide out. Yeah. He just he did you know? say that right the other day where he was going to go. I might have to leave the country. Yeah. yeah. He said that if I lose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, they're going to be coming after him for a while. Wow. You know, um, and um, when are you going to have a baby? What? <laughs> When am I going to have a baby? Yeah, we've talked about it. When are you going to have a baby? Mm. You Because I know that you've said it before. It's been in your mind. Mm. When are you going to have one? I love this. I love when men pressure other men for kids. <laughs> Something I've I, never I, seen I, I honestly need you to have a baby. But with who? who? With who? I know yeah, that's... With who? Well, here's the thing, okay? Mm. I wanted to have one with Whitney. <laughs> <laughs> Whitney Cummings? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wait, Why? Isn't well, she considering the eggs. it? Yeah, no, she's got eggs that are frozen. Oh, that's right. Ah. And I'm like, dude, like here, like let's go. Like what are you- <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Like what are you waiting for? Yeah. yeah Without yeah. her carrying it. Like with a surrogate. Yeah. 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 I wanted to do it with her. And did you ask her? We talked about it. And what'd she say? She's dodgy, bro. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, very dodgy. Yeah, dude. Whitney, yeah. Come but on. why not? What the fuck is she waiting? But for? are you okay? But will you raise him? 
No, or her. she'll probably raise them. <laughs> well, that's what it, you can't just tell a girl, like well, you're going to have my baby. Well, I'm sure we're not going to be together. I know, I understand know? that, but it's like, what if she doesn't ha- want to have a baby right now? I'm saying, why don't you get a baby with a normal person? Or you can find the address. Where the eggs are in Long Beach, because I think they're in Long Beach, and then me and you can break in Chinese style, and then we can steal the eggs, and we can fucking put in some fried rice. No, we won't do. That. I don't know. I don't know. It's a good question, you know. Yeah, but I want. It's like you know. Um, I don't know what it is. I just always looked, saw you as a father, you know. And I know you've said that to me, but you expressed that to me before, where you're like, I want to have a kid. Yeah. Yeah. I do imagine um, kids loving you. Mm. Well, can we say something to our audience, our base, and go, Is listen. people watching? No, this? just maybe. <laughs> maybe there's somebody out there, right? Egg donors? Yeah. yeah. Or, you know, I if they want to do it live, you know what I mean? A surrogate. <laughs> a surrogate, surrogate. A s- or they could do it live. Live well, sex. Yeah, yeah. We can't just be anybody. He's got to want. He's got to like. Right. We'll have applications. Their and stuff. genetics, their predispositions, health issues. Like, there's certain things you have to consider. Right, but I just want to like throw it out there. An Anyone listening right now? Um, Mike, very good. He's my uncle. He's like my uncle or cousin, Paul. Sure, seashore. Um, maybe, um, maybe he, you know, he's looking for someone to have a baby with. You know what I mean? And may, throw in your application. I think the way we do it is we find, like you said, the surrogate situation. Mm-hmm. Okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Where I give my semen, we take an egg, we give it to someone. Yeah. Right? And then it comes out, and then the baby's here, and then I give it to Mike Tran. <laughs> Tran. Tran. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. He can, he can take the baby, and he can live with his half Chinese Vietnamese parents right and you could just come uh, visit it once a month yeah once a month yeah because so no. you don't want to fucking raise one no i'm just kidding no um it, it, it's it's more of a better time now especially since i'm gonna uh peel off the road a little yeah i think you know more is a better time now but um, yeah but you know that for me there's it's like it's it's a lot of it's a trust thing you know you know i have that problem it's a hard barrier it's like I don't want to say I'm famous. You that are. Sounds fucking disgusting. But you are. So the girls like you for that. It's been a difficult thing for me to deal with. What's your suggestion on that? Am I right or am I wrong? I feel like you can. I feel like you're a really smart guy, and you can probably sniff that out very early on. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, but I think there are a lot of really decent down and ride or die women out there mm. who who will go through that journey with you if you had a name or not. Mm. And pa- Paul, when people say, okay, and I read it on in the internets, right? Yeah. They say, um, Kalila's only with you, mm. you know what I mean? Mm. Because you're famous or right. you're a comedian, you have money. And I, and I say to myself, really, you know any woman that would stay with somebody <laughs> who shits in a fucking Prius? Right. <laughs> right? I don't who think has that helps deal- our argument. Though. I know, but who has to deal with that? <laughs> Well, no, she, but that's a good. She question. comes in the car. She has to smell the residue of my shit, okay. and she's still with me. I and think this it, is a daily thing. She's not going to do that. Women that are going to be with you, I know right. you, right? Yeah. You're women, nasty, bro. Women aren't sadists <laughs> in that way. Yeah. If we if we don't like you, it doesn't matter. Or at least the women that I know, it doesn't matter who you are, how much you make. If you're a jerk, an asshole, a narcissist, and a fucking and emotionally that neglectful, was all, all of she just said who I was. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. No, I no, I know. Yeah, there's saying. no amount of money that could ever be worth staying with somebody Here, like that. Yeah, you know? here's how I, I look at it. I think every every woman is attracted to someone, a guy that it has some sort of success, whether it's financial, whether it's celebrity, whether it's or it's you know some sort of you know owns real estate first. Mm. I you know, that's like the first and drive. Yeah, that's but attractive. that's like the first. They're like, yeah. oh, blah, blah, blah. But then after that, they're like, well, who is this person? And yeah. then they're like, oh, is this person? Because that cool initial appeal yeah. of seeing somebody either because they're famous, that novelty wears very quickly. By yeah. the time you share a toilet with somebody or by the, by the time you see that person shit in the back, back seat of a car, <laughs> that novelty of them being famous and on stage of being Bobby Lee is out of your fucking mind. Mm-hmm. So you've got to love them. I, I hope that you love him and you're attracted to them for more than just that. So when you first started going out with him, though, you were attracted to him because he was 
I don't want to say famous, famous, but he was. You thought he was funny, and he was on Mad TV, and yeah. you knew who he was. Of course, I yeah. like, you're, like the fact that he was. Him. You're like, oh my god, that guy's fucking hilarious. I saw him in fucking da 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 da. Funny. Yeah. Before I met him, I I made sure that I talked to him on the phone. I didn't want to meet up with someone I would have nothing to talk with talk to about. And the fact that he got on the phone, called me, and we had an hour conversation that seemed really seamless. Then I was like, yeah, I'll meet you in person. I met him at a coffee shop further away from my home just because I didn't want him to know where I lived. Mm. And from then <laughs> on, yeah. yeah, it was, it was it an instant connection. No, but it was a connection. It was obviously yeah, yeah. like a... But for us to like commit to something and all that stuff, it took months and months. Yeah. And um, I have to also say that you know at that time... I didn't have the kind of fame that you have. Mm. You know, my fame was more cultish. Mm. I was just, the only thing I had really done was stay on a sketch show, you know? Mm. But I did, was never like, if I was in a movie, I would have two lines. It was just mm. nothing significant, yeah. you know? I wasn't an MT yeah. uh, MTV, sorry, babe. Yeah. That's how you know. Um, I wasn't a Matt TV, Matt TV super fan. I wasn't a Bobby Lee super fan. I saw him once at the Comedy Store the weekend that Chris Rock um, hosted the Oscars. Mm -hmm. He followed Chris Rock, annihilated, and I, I, I kept that in my mind. Like, holy shit, this is an Asian man. I'm Asian. I'm like, this is an Asian man absolutely crushing it in this industry. So, yeah, I respected his craft more so because he was a Korean man who kind of, like, paved this way. I respected that so much about him, and he was such not the model minority Asian that I see. He was, he's, he was filthy, he was crass. He was all the things that I related to because I'm not a model minority either. Mm. Like I grew up very similarly to him. Yeah. So when we finally met, I was like, holy shit, this is like an old like war um, comrade. It felt, <laughs> like, it felt like somebody that I had met. Yeah. We were or in that, NOM like, together. Yeah, we were in NOM together. Yeah. Mm. And, and then uh, what about trust though? What part? Like, what kind? What are like trusting well, him? Well, I've had a him? lot of my girlfriends who are dishonest to me, and I was dishonest to them. Like, tr well, first of all, you have to take finish. care of let your me, side. Of the let me finish. Me trusting myself, and then me trusting them. You know what I mean? I've had a lot of girlfriends that I've been with that were not faithful to me. He wasn't trustworthy when I first met him mm. at all. Yeah, but were you trustworthy? I by the time he said I love you, we want I want to be in a committed relationship. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. There was nothing, and I don't. Have you ever felt any type of way about me? I love like what? straying. No. Uh, yeah, and I hate that. I hate that he. I I almost feel like I should have kept him on his toes more because <laughs> I gave him the immediate feeling like I'm yours. I'm down for you. Let's do this. Life yeah. There's together. not a feeling that she's gonna leave, and also. And I hate that <coughs> I give that feeling because yeah, yeah, I want to keep yeah. him on his toes. But hey, trusting him in the beginning, Bitch, you the ain't first. Leaving. The what? Yeah. Bitch, you ain't leaving. He's leaving. like, you're not leaving. Who are you gonna? Yeah. 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 But you when going, bit? he was really difficult. <laughs> the, All right. <laughs> the first year, I had never dated anybody that whose rules were so hazy in that way when it came to texting women. Okay. Okay. And um, um, <laughs> things like that. So okay, I un unhelpful. What happened? Yeah, he was. He, he didn't did, do nothing. In the first year we were together, he was pretty horrible. Paul, Paul, you he just. He was horrible. Paul, okay. Sauna. 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 But Paul, <laughs> you, <laughs> Paul, all right. First of all, the next time you're in a relationship, just don't cheat. Right? It's not, it's not good. I get it. And all that's, right. Yeah. And right? Regardless not, of what they do, right? You take care of your side of the street. Yeah. Right? So you don't do it, right? And if you're going to commit to somebody, look at somebody's eyes and go, let's be in a committed relationship. Not that it's like a legal marriage kind of a thing, but it's like. No, it's your word. It's your word. Yeah, I get it. Right. I agree. that. Yeah, and so I look at Kalila and I go, I will never cheat on her. Right. Took a year I jerk off the fucking porn hub. You know what I mean? But like I would never do. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. What do you watch on porn hub? I, 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 I stopped, but I used to. I used to I, Which I, one's your section? Anyway, unhelpful advice. Unhelpful advice with Bobby, Kalila, and Polly Shaw. I'm a 55-year-old Korean man. I recently started doing open mics a little over three years ago. 
I can't say that I've been doing it on a consistent basis. And of course, with COVID situation, it's been to a complete stop. As you may have guessed, I have literally bombed all eight times I tried <laughs> my material on stage. I know that comedy is a long process and that you are obviously going to eat shit when you first start, but I want to be realistic about what my comedy ceiling is. When I ask my friends if I think I should continue comedy or if I should, they find me intrinsically funny, I don't get the positive response I'm looking for. Mm. Do you think I might be delusional thinking I can do comedy? Should I view the lack of encouragement as a sign I'm not cut out for this? What are your thoughts? Should this 55-year-old Korean man quit? Mm. I heard David Letterman once say, right? David Letterman once said that um, whenever a young man comes up to me and asks if I should st do stand-up comedy, he always says no because he knows that the real comedians will do it anyway. Mm. You know? So it's like, um, mm. what, what, regardless, I told Sebastian Maniscalco the first time he, night he ever went up, I looked him dead in the eyes and I said, don't ever do that again. <laughs> You don't have it. Jesus. You know what I mean? And he's like, what do you mean? I go, it just wasn't good. Mm. Right? And now look at him. Mm. Right? So it's like, you know, do what your heart says. But, you know, I know that at the end of the day, guys like Paul and I do it because it's fun. And it's in our system. Yeah. It's just yeah. something that we just, I love the adrenaline rush. Yeah. Right? I love just being on stage in front of people. I love the f sometimes the fear or I just love everything about it. The lights when things don't go right. I love all of it, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, I love the lifestyle. Yeah. I so just you think, have to love yeah, it. I just, exactly. I think it, it's not a hobby. It's a lifestyle. Mm. So it doesn't matter for this guy or for anyone else. I mean, it shouldn't be, oh, I kind of, I just stand up once in a while. It's like, no, stand up is the first thing. And then there's all the other shit. Yeah. And then also you have to, N don't look at it like oh i want to get paid or i want to do this you do it because you just love it yeah you know and even like i did a, I did denver recently i did dallas i did oklahoma i played you know and i fucking was on stage i'm like oh my god that was so fun you know yeah yeah, yeah. so it's like in, if you're not coming from that place then he should fucking get out you know and like you said i think the letterman thing's great like why is he even fucking checking in it's like fuck what your friends say and fuck yeah. asking us if you should do it or not like just do it you know what i mean yeah like if he finds joy in it but don't drag your friends or family and inconvenience them if <laughs> no they tell like, you if you suck leave them at home but the, also a comic always has though the one thing which is an ear yeah, yeah. you know, know you've always said that eventually you have to have an ear mm. you know what i mean it's like the reason why Paulie, when I was an open micer, asked me to open because I guess he saw a show, I mean, where people liked me, right? You saw it, right? You saw, you saw. Well, I liked you, right? Something yeah. about me, and that, and 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 when people like him, right? At that time, yeah, you know, he's a movie star, right? Mm -hmm. And he was saying to me, some open micer, open for me, right? To me, I found that to be a hint that I'm going in the right direction, mm -hmm. right? And I, I never really kind of like asked, you know what I mean, a guy, because I used to bring, I'd invite like the waiter, a waiter from work, you know, because I used to work at a restaurant. Hey, Will, come see me. And he saw me go up and then afterwards he didn't say anything, you know what I mean? <laughs> no. like, and I was just like, oh, maybe I'm, you know, I wouldn't judge yeah. that ba based on him. Right. By his email, he sounds very insecure and like, you know, really like checking in. Like I would just not do it. You know? <laughs> There well, no, go. but I'm mean, yeah, like, yeah. oh, should I do it? Should I not do it? Yeah. Like, fuck us. It's like, you shouldn't even ask, or you guys, you don't ask if you should do it. Just, you know. I, I honestly, even when, because in the beginning, it didn't work out, Yeah. right? I would bomb, but it was like, I couldn't wait to get back on. Mm. You know, I just knew it <laughs> in, in instinctually that this is what I'm going to do. Right, yeah. so that that should be your meter. Mm -hmm. And then also or asking me, more, what the fuck are you asking me for? Also, when you're more comfortable on stage than you are, like just at a party or out, out, that says a lot too. You yeah, know, just more relaxed. You know, you, you you have to generally get to the point on stage, and I, I've fucking said this before, but fuck it. Um, that um, you you bomb enough where you feel truly comfortable up there, mm. right? Because yeah. what in yes. the beginning you're like oh, I'm going to get booed, or what if they don't laugh? And you have all these fears, that with things that could happen, and that inhibits the way you yeah. are up there. I like, I like not getting laughs. 
I know you do. Yeah, I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know who doesn't? Because I always say something if I don't get a laugh, and then usually that'll get the laugh. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know who just ignores the non-laughter, which is hilarious, is Argus. Oh, yeah. Argus yeah, will fucking go up and just do these lines and commit to them, and he'll just, some of them won't get laughs, and he'll just pretend no one laughed, and he just keeps <laughs> Like, that's hilarious. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's for you to not say anything if something doesn't go well, it's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Or, you know, I love comics like Brian Regan mm -hmm. used to never address hecklers. Oh. He just would ignore them, right? And like, I, w I heard one time I was in a, a room, I was a young guy. And someone goes, fuck you, to Brian Regan. And he just kind of just kept going. Oh, that's <laughs> it, was, it, was great. it was great. Paul, um, I miss you. Thank you for coming here. I enjoyed myself. Good luck in Vegas. Thank you. Thank you. And hopefully if when it, things loosen up, I can come visit you over there. Like your rectum loosens up a little bit? No, the pandemic and stuff. Oh. oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> When we get back to normal, all right? And I think if when we get back to normal, you'll come, probably come back, right? Maybe? Probably. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I didn't, buy, I didn't buy a house, at least a house. So yeah. I'm out there for a while, yeah. for at least a year. Yeah. You know, but it's it's heaven out there. It really is. And I, I'm glad you're happy. It's great. You look like you're happy yeah. out there. It's fun. Yeah. And, uh, you know, L.A. is very, you know, close. I mean, even the traffic here, it's like it's, there's no traffic in Vegas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you drive around, you go... And, you know, and I got, I got a young bunch of guys there that I'm, like, training and mentoring, and that feels really good, you know, pr production guys like mm -hmm. you guys. And, and um, it's hard, you know what I mean, to, to get people on board. You know, I'm kind of like a cult leader a little bit, like, trying to, you know what I mean? Like, as a producer, I've been producing and directing for Are years. Are there people that, like, when you're doing your show and you call them and they go, I don't want to do it? Or are they like, no, we were there? Who? I'm no. I'm asking. I mean, yes. how do you get no, no? In terms of your the casting the crew. crew, yeah. How do you get that many people to show up? At no, Oregon? everyone's in. Oh, good. Okay, everyone's in. Harry Basil's there. Carl Lebeau is Tell there. Tell Harry I said Alan. Wait, what? Carl Lebeau's there. there. What? I love. Wait, him. is Carl? Ooh. Carl. Yeah. Carl's Does Carl still have cancer? I talked to him about a month ago, and he had a sense of humor. I didn't get into the details of it. There's my plane. <laughs> I got to get out of here. Southwest flying from Burbank to um I don't know I haven't talked to him in the last month but um, oh yeah, god yeah. he okay I want to just say and and I was gonna end but I just gotta say one last thing about Carl LeBeau okay Carl LeBeau is some he's a friend he's somebody that when I first moved up here he was so kind to me mm. what a great guy and watching him perform mm. even now at his age mm. he is so dynamic on stage i just yeah. think he's so funny physical uh, he's a nice man mm. i heard that he could be sick mm. right and um, i just he's a legend mm. and um he was the one that was there when sam died right yeah yeah and he's a part of that whole um the houston boys that yeah well the outlaws and the outlaws, you know, yeah, with mitchell yeah. walters and alan and yeah you know i think kravitz is out there too Oh, wow. I haven't seen Kravitz in a while. But yeah. Vegas is cool. You know, my dad lived there for 20 years. So his widow's out there. Suzanne is out there. And um, they've really kind of been nice to me, people out there. And it's been, you know, it's been nice to give back to, you know, them and teach them and help them. And and it's cool. You know, it's uh, and hopefully when the stages come back, I can start working on my one man show, which I was doing before the whole thing went down. Um, and uh you know, we'll see. You know, it's one day at a time. I got my sauna. You know, I got my <laughs> I got my barrel sauna. Yeah. And I got my little Asian assistant. You know, Mike Tran, Bok, Bok Choi. Yeah, yeah, Bok Choi. He's cool. I'd love to meet him one day. Yeah, tell him you say hi. Hi, Bok. Say say it to him in Korean. I guess I have Bok. Wait, isn't he Vietnamese and Chinese? <laughs> yeah, but you guys all—they all kind of. No, they're not. They're not similar. They're not similar in any way. He's got almonds though too. Yeah, yeah. Hello, almond. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for right, having Paul, me. Right, 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 right. Also, my podcast, Random Rants. Random Rants. It's my favorite. I've done it's it. It's on all things comedy. Yeah. And uh, check out my new episodes. I got Bill Burr, Jeff Ross, Ooh. Mike Binder, and Annie's on the LA episodes. So I'm banging them all out while I'm here. Thank you guys for having me. Uh, also, congratulations to all your success. Thank Very you. happy for you guys. You. I'm glad you guys stuck it out. Thank you. Thank you, George. Thank you. Polyshore.com for all the stuff, guys. Don't Take leave that photo. That was great. Slept friends, slept family, slept countrymen. Hear he, hear he.
Lots of fun bonus content over at Patreon, the exclusive home of Tiger Belly Vlogs, and much more. Help support your favorite podcast and join a community of folks just like you at patreon.com slash tigerbelly. We'd like to thank our sponsors, Magic Spoons, Hymns, uh, Magic Spoon, Hymns, BetterHelp, and Native. Crunch into your keto-friendly cocoa, fruity, frosted, and blueberry breakfast cereal tomorrow morning. Go to magicspoon.com slash belly to grab a variety pack and try it today. It's time to write a new chapter, one in which you have hair. Go to fourhymns.com slash belly. Don't be like that one friend Bobby keeps talking about. Join over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional at betterhelp.com slash belly. Do what we did and make the switch to native today by going to nativedo.com slash belly or use promo code belly at checkout. Get 20% off your first order. And alert, alert, we have some shout outs, specifically a Vegas shout out. Take it away, Kalila. I don't like the way you did that. Okay, guys, we have shout outs today. It sounded very um, perfect. Jeez, have now you heard, I feel have high you heard, pressure to not stutter. Have you heard me say any of these ads? <laughs> it's the first night of the day, so you can... Um, since we were talking about Vegas and homes and leasing and renting, I wanted to yep. give a shout out to one of my best friends. His name is Matt Suter, and he's a realtor out there. He works for Berkshire. Uh, I think he, he has his own Firm? thing, but he's yeah. under Berkshire Hathaway. But he's one of, honestly, the best realtors out there. Mm -hmm. And I almost want to buy a home in Vegas solely to work with him. But shout out <laughs> to him. He's been one of my best friends since I was 17. And if you need a home in Vegas, he's your guy to go check him out. Also, he's just a cool guy and he surfs a lot. And he watches UFC with all of us. Yes, he can beat all of us up, basically. Yeah, basically. Uh, get your questions on Tiger Bell by emailing us at adviceunhelpful at gmail.com. We're looking for something out of the ordinary. Strange coworkers, weird family members, alien encounters. You can email us at uh, adviceunhelpful at gmail.com. Uh, you can find everything Kalila at Calamity K, everything George, George underscore Kimmel, everything the Captain uh, Lee at Bobby Lee Live, and follow me at Gilbits. Uh, we love you. Check out Tiger Moon on Instagram and have a good night.